Good morning, all of you beautiful beings of light. <laughs> for those of you who are on Zoom, I'm so disappointed you can't see this fantastic outfit I put together for you. <laughs> I, I really do enjoy being here and with all of you. My soul's purpose is to be a messenger of love and freedom and light for all humanity. And while this is not the largest physical audience in the world, the important thing is that this message is going out across the world in its own way. And I always set the intentions that what comes through me is what's best for all concerned. And I've been really feeling guided for about the last year to talk about bridging the divide. I got the guidance about a year ago to start creating bridging the divide the events, which still has yet to physically manifest, although a lot of people are starting to get this same message that this reality where we've been living in is a false reality. It's an illusion. And people are starting to feel that. The conversations I have on the street of something strange is going on. Something doesn't feel quite right. Something feels off. This doesn't feel real. It's like this surreal experience we're having. People are starting to grasp that this reality that's been constructed for us isn't the reality we chose to create. You know, maybe on a subconscious level, yes. But on the greater scheme of things, we are moving out of the old reality and into something entirely new. On December 18th, 2012, I was awoken from my sleep at four o'clock in the morning. And I don't know why things happen at four o'clock in the morning, but they do. My best stuff happens in the middle of the night and in the shower. <laughs> so, I was awoken with these words, convergence complete. I knew exactly what that meant. Two years earlier, when the first, when my channel got turned on, as I was explaining to someone earlier in the audience, that those of us who are considered conscious channels, we actually all do this, by the way. Most people don't know they're conscious channeling. They are. The only difference is my antenna is up, but I'm constantly listening. It's like turning into a radio station, right? We're all tuned in and we all have this ability. Just a lot of people haven't turned on their radio yet, turned on their channel. So I, I, I was in the bathtub, again, back to water and then shower and all that. And this message came in that, uh, and I had, had never heard the term dimensions before. I was laying in the bathtub and I heard these words, our dimensions are about to collide. I'm like, who is this? And the voice came back with my voice. I'm not hearing voices. The voice in my mind said, I am you in the fourth dimension and our worlds are about to collide. I had no idea what that even meant. So I talked to a friend of mine a few days later and I said, I got this message about dimensions and converging and colliding. I don't know what that means. She's like, yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> I didn't know that. So I got this message that our worlds were going to converge. And then two years later, I got the message that the convergence was complete and that we are now living in a reality where the third dimension and the fourth dimension both coexist. What that basically means is that the, the third dimension is this fear-based reality we've been living in for about 12,000 years. The guidance I get is between 10 and 12,000, so about 11,000 years, we've been living in a fear-based reality. And that... The fourth dimension is a, is a bridge where we are allowed to now bring heaven to earth. This is a time that's been foretold for thousands of years, and it is actually now upon us. The ascension started in the early 1960s. The guidance I get is 1963, and it's been growing by 3% a year since then. In 2020, the Great Awakening started, and the masses of humanity started waking up. We went behind closed doors to be kept and contained, and instead we started waking up to the illusion that we've been living under for many thousands of years. So this convergence that occurred in 2012, what I was told is we would begin to experience a duality reality. I had no idea what that meant. It's a duality reality. Well, we've seen that, haven't we, over the last 10 years? This duality this division that has become so pervasive just about the time in 2012 when we were starting to have our spiritual awakening, 
there. But at 2012, the world was going to change and we were going to create new earth, this love-based reality. And then it felt like it stalled. It didn't stall, it just converged. It, this convergence of these two realities have allowed us for masses of humanity to start waking up to what's really possible within every single one of us. And we started to experience this duality of reality, which I now know is part of the illusion. The right versus left, black versus white, young versus old, rich versus poor, We've been seeing that narrative played out in all of our media, in our social media, in our conversations, to the degree now where it's gotten to the point where it's uncomfortable to have a conversation with someone who is supposedly on the other side. There is no other side. That is an illusion that's been created to keep us divided and conquered. There is only one, and all of us want exactly the same thing. We're all one people, one love, one humanity. There is no division. The issue is that we bought into this illusion that there is a division. And it's time for us to stop believing this false narrative and be willing to have those difficult conversations. And one of the things I've found is when we do, we find out we all want exactly the same thing. We've just been told we want something different. And people are starting to wake up to the truth that that is all part of the illusion. And this fear-based, three-dimensional matrix is, is beginning to collapse because so many of us are waking up and seeing it for what it is, the illusion that it is. And so a couple of months ago, I got the message that we have now entered the time of the great convergence. It began, of course, in 2012, with the two realities beginning to converge so that we could start to see the difference between these two realities, a fear-based reality and a love-based reality coexisting side by side, and we get to choose which one of those realities we're going to participate in, which one of those realities we're going to create. We can either stay in this subconscious, half asleep with the blinders on and the sleep mask, as I call it, take off the sleep mask and see the light and realize we don't have to be in this fear-based reality. We get to choose love-based reality. We get to create heaven on earth. We are creators. That's how we are made in the image and likeness of God. Creation, our ability to create is what separates human beings from the rest of the animal kingdom, if you will. So this great convergence is now where both sides of the bridge, if you will, are beginning to converge and come together on the bridge of unity. Those we have seen as being on the opposite side are starting to wake up and say, oh, this division is an illusion. It's being propagated by the media to keep us separated. And we're just not going to believe it anymore. I had a conversation about a week ago with a couple of young people. Now, of course, this is young versus old, right? The, the, the baby boomers are the reason the planet is the mess that it's in. And of course, the older generation is always blaming the younger generation for the issues, right? That's, so we're having this conversation and we keep saying, we have got to bring these two groups together. Are you gonna love this with a friend of mine who I saying a few weeks ago, the way to bring these two groups together is through hippie music. <laughs> we gotta revive the music from the 1960s. <laughs> and music is one way that we can do that because there's so many amazing messages in there. I was having a conversation with these two young people, they're about 20 years old and they were all mad at me because they, they think that I'm on one side and they're on the other side. I'm like, you guys, I don't do sides. I don't. Because I know the sides that are created just an illusion to keep us against itself. But even the, our government, the right versus left, Democrat versus Republican, that's an illusion. That was created to keep us fighting against each other. The people at the top that we vote for, they're neither one. 
they just tell us what they think we're doing right here, and then we look against each other. <laughs> we're competing us against each other and, and telling us that we are each other's enemies when it's all just part of the, the false narrative. Mm -hmm. And so I was talking to this young man, and I told him where I'm coming from, and he considers himself to be very much on the other side. And I, and after a few minutes, he said, oh my gosh, we, we actually agree on everything. And I said, yes, that's the point. We actually agree on everything. We just don't take the time to sit and have these conversations because we're so afraid to. And that fear is also part of the illusion. To keep us afraid to unify. We have to get past that fear of someone else's sensitivities and sit and open our hearts and listen. And when we do, we find out we want exactly the same thing. When we unify, we will create a new reality. Because there are eight billion of us and only a few of those that are trying to keep us separated. And so I wanted to talk to you about, one, people are starting to wake up to the illusion of division. And because they're waking up the illusion of division, that old reality is starting to collapse. We will start seeing our system start to collapse. And for those who don't understand that actually it's for our highest and greatest good, this is going to be really scary for people. But it's really important for those of us who are aware of this and understand the collapse of the old reality is a very, very important part of the creation of our new reality. I use the butterfly a lot in my presentations because it is such a perfect example of the process humanity is going through. The collective of humanity is beginning to leave behind its caterpillar phase and move into the chrysalis phase, this transition phase that humanity is now in. And this transition phase includes the full, complete collapse of the old self. And in that cocoon can be scary because who the caterpillar thought it was, it now is not, and it's becoming something else. And so those of us who understand that this chrysalis phase, the fourth dimension, which nobody ever talks about, everybody wants to go from 3D to 5D, <laughs> they can skip the 4D, which I find rather interesting. It's like trying to go from being a caterpillar to butterfly without the chrysalis phase. It just doesn't work that way. The fourth dimension is where we get to do all the spiritual work that we're doing. That's where the magic happens. That's where we let go of everything that doesn't serve us. That's where we get to envision the new reality we're creating. So it's really embrace this chrysalis transition phase that we're in as uncomfortable as it is. It's also a necessary part of our transition into the world we're creating. The world we are creating is bringing heaven to earth. And I was sitting and listening earlier about um, not being so much in the ethereal that you're not in the physical. I had this experience I want to say in January 2011, I was standing in my kitchen and I had a Holy Spirit experience where I was so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, it literally brought me to my knees in tears and it, the, the bliss is beyond words. And then I said to myself, I want to be here all the time. And the response that came is, you still live on planet Earth. <laughs> So the idea is to be able to bring that level of bliss into the human experience so that everyone gets to experience that. That's the, the, the time of peace and plenty that's been foretold for thousands of years is what is upon us. And the illusion is trying to keep that from happening. So the more we wake up to this illusion of division, the sooner we get to create this reality that is wanting to be created through each and every one of us. That is this bridge that we are now moving on to. The bridging, we are bridging the opposites, the supposed opposites coming together on this bridge of unification, which is this dimension where we get to recreate our worlds. It is the bridge where we get to bring heaven to earth. And One of the things I wanted to share with you also is this narrative we've been told for many thousands of years that this is a learning product. 
that time is complete. Several years ago, I was shown when I first started um, understanding who I am and my purpose on the planet, that we as a collective of souls, thousands of years ago, agreed for this to be a planet of peace, <laughs> until we as a collective of souls decided, or, I'm sorry, thousands of years ago agreed for this to be a learning planet. We agreed for the contrast to exist on this planet so that we as a collective of souls could learn through it. When we incarnate here, we know we are coming to this learning planet. And we are learning on a soul level, what I call a soul-level level. We are learning lessons for our soul as our souls are infinite and traveling through the cosmos. We agree to have this human experience for however many times we need to have it to learn the lessons we as a soul want to learn. So we as a collective of souls agreed for this to be a learning planet. Fear came to the planet. This is what the story in the Garden of Eden is all about. It's about how fear arrived at the planet and we left Gaia's garden and went out into the playground and decided to learn through the contrast of fear and darkness. And we were up for the challenge of seeing whether we could find our own light within the darkness and find our true loving essence within the fear. And then I was shown that there would come a time when a collective of souls would agree for this to be a planet of peace. That has now occurred. We as a collective of souls have now agreed that it's time for this to be, no longer be a learning planet and for it to be a planet of peace. It's now up to us to recognize that that is now the new soul agreement that we've all had and let go of the old narrative that this is a learning planet. That time is over. So many of the souls that are transitioning off this planet right now will not be coming back for more karmic resolution because the learning time is complete. If we do transition back, it's because we're coming back to this place that is now a respite for souls. And because we now know this to be true, we no longer have to hold this belief that this is a learning planet. The more of us who believe this is a learning planet, the longer we actually hold that reality here. We are the creators of our reality. We are always infinitely creating with each other, what I call inter-creating with each other, as one unified collective mind. And we're always inter-creating with Source, God, the one that, that creates all things, the infinite love of all that is. We are all that, and we are all rays of light. So I was saying earlier how some people can't own that I am the light. Every single one of us is the light, and we are all the way. And the way through the darkness is through each one of us having the courage to radiate our light and be willing to have these difficult conversations and be willing to see past the illusion that this is in the light, that this planet is intended to be a place of division that is an old story that no longer exists. It was part of the old fear-based world. This new love-based world, that doesn't exist. We're now here creating a new reality and putting into practice everything we have learned over the many soul experiences. So what each of us need to do is to understand, and we've been going around, how many of us, for many thousands of years, putting up our guard, right? Fighting against each other in the belief that we are the enemies, that each other is the enemy. Unaware that there is, there are those who consider themselves to be above the rest of us. That are running the show behind the scenes. We call them they, because we don't know who they are. They. They are out there in front. They're putting the, they put up the money to create the show, but the front runners that are out there aren't the ones who are running the show. Because they, there are these, these beings who consider themselves to be about the rest. And, and this isn't a conspiracy theory thing. One of the messages that came in for me about 10 years ago is that there are individuals on the planet who really do believe the rest of humanity is not capable of making decisions for themselves. They really do believe that they, were created to be our leaders because they're the only ones who are equipped to lead. 
and the rest of us don't have what it takes. And so they continue to put themselves up in positions of leadership. And what so many people are starting to wake up to is that simply not true. This belief that we are not capable of self-governing is part of a fear-based reality. When enough of us are living our lives from our hearts, we don't need anyone else to tell us how to live. We don't need leaders. We don't need presidents and kings and palaces. One of the things I love about the spiritual center is that here, this spiritual community gets it. You don't have a minister that's telling you what to think. You're not paying a minister a six-figure income and instead you're using the money that's donated to fix up this beautiful center and to be of service to the community. That is what the new reality looks like. No one telling us what to do. No one telling us what to think. When each of us understand we can self-guide through our own loving hearts, all of our systems will start to fail because they no longer serve. We don't need them. Our systems exist to serve the systems, not the people. And we're all starting to get it. Young and old, black and white, liberal, conservative, right, left. We're all starting to understand we don't need to be governed. We don't need militaries. We don't need prisons. We don't need police. Now, right now in this transition phase, if we're ever to all come collapsing down all at once, we could have some mass chaos. So in the transition phase, that will continue to exist. The more of us that wake up to the truth that we don't actually need to be governed by anyone else because we have the ability to self-govern, all those fear-based systems will be, cease to exist because we just don't need them anymore. What we do need is to remember, again, that we are all the light and the way. That we're all here for one purpose. One love, one heart, one mind. One love, which is the love of source embodied in every single one of us. One mind, the mind of source, that we are all divine beings having a human experience. That we're all here for the purpose of one planet, one heart. That there is one purpose, which is the freedom of all life on earth from the present fear based reality. The only weapons we need as we begin to understand that all of this division is an illusion and we come together on this bridge of unity is the sword of truth. The truth that we are all divine, that we are all love, that we are all light, and that this avatar we're wearing is just a costume. It doesn't matter what the costume looks like, how old it is, the shade of it, the, the condition of our eyes. <laughs> Some of us, our eyes are deteriorating as I'm looking at my notes. They're not as clear as they used to be. <laughs> I wrote them in about 20 size fonts so I could read them clearly. And that, that this avatar is just that. There are extraordinary beings on the planet right now. There are hundreds of millions of us who have volunteered to help move humanity forward. There are angels embodied in human form. There are ascended masters embodied in human form. There are light beings embodied in human form. There are benevolent ETs embodied in human form. And I know this sounds out of this world, but they are here walking among us. And they took on human form because we are not allowed to interfere with human choice. But what we can do is teach human beings how to make better choices. And as human, beginning, human beings begin waking up to the truth that they can make better choices, those choices will then become the collective choices and we'll start to see our reality shift and change 
lets you understand the power of conscious truths. Because until this point, most human beings are making unconscious truths. Unconscious fear by choice, because that's what we've been told. We've been told all its fear-based stories through the media, through the movies, that, that heaven on earth is impossible, that utopia is impossible. I had this discussion with my son a few weeks ago. I told him, look, I believe that utopia is possible. Because no, no, it's not. Everybody knows that dystopia is the only thing that's possible. It's in all the movies. That's a narrative we've been told. I know better than that. When we say we want peace on earth, it's time to really mean it and know that it's possible because we are the ones who can make it possible. And so in conclusion, I just want to remind all of you, the sort of truth is the truth that we are all divine beings having a human experience. And the only armor we need is the armor of love. When we carry the armor of love, all of that fear-based illusion cannot penetrate us. It has no power over us because we are armed with love and truth. We are the ones we've been waiting for. In the spiritual community, we've been saying that for at least the past decade. We the people, the the political, the, um, the freedom fighters have been saying, we the people, for how many centuries? We're the same group of people. We the people are not the conservatives fighting against the we're the ones we've been waiting for on our liberal side. That's part of the division and illusion. We're the ones we've been waiting for, and we the people actually are the same. We need to come together on this bridge and understand we are the same. We are all here for the purpose of liberating humanity from the fear-based reality and bringing heaven to earth. Religion calls it one thing. Spirituality calls it one thing. It's all the same thing. Pick a label. It's all the same thing. It's peace on earth. It's been promised to us for thousands of years, and now is the time to create it. We create it by who we choose to be, by reaching out our hands, and bringing this division together and having those conversations of unification. And when we really understand this, we know that we are all in this together. And together we will see this through. The divine in me sees the divine in you. The love in me knows the love in you. The light in me recognizes the light in you. And together, we will all see this through.